So um, next step on the condor, I've uh, this has been gloss coated now. Taken out the sponge there that was protecting this part. I've put in um, a metal barrel there, um, which I used. It's the perfect size. So I've, I've worked out the perfect size for 20 millimeter cannons in one seventy second scale, and that is this um, Albion Alloys uh, rod, and it's um, eight mil by six mil which is um, 8 mil outside, 6 mil inside, and that uh, that gives a very nice scale effect, so that just hollows out the barrel. I mean, it's quite a formidable, formidable beast, this, I think. The cannon sort of comes out as far as the uh, cockpit there, so quite something. Um, now, I think to kick off, I'm going to predominantly be using oils to weather this for dust effects and give it a well-worn look, but... Um, to get the panel lines sorted, I think I'm probably going to use, um, I'm just going to hit it with the dark dirt from Flory models, seal that in, and then go to town on oils and mix them together and, and all the rest of it. And some of it will end up in the panel lines and that's fine. Um, I do need to gloss coat this because it will it will get pulled out with any liquid, so even with the oil um, thinners. <laughs> It'd be more the fact it's wet as opposed to it being the thinner that will mean it will um, wash it out of the panel lines. So I have shown this uh, many times before on my channel, so I'm not going to video that. You basically a large brush, you slop it on, you know, get as much as you can onto the wing, uh, on onto the aircraft in in everywhere, and then you wipe it off with a damp cloth. And it's as simple as that. It's clay based. It is completely. Um, uh, safe as far as uh, being um, eating into paint or uh, materials or plastic or anything like that, it literally will just wipe off if you don't want it. Um, so, I think that will give good definition, especially down here. So, um, where it's that kind of colour. And when I was up at Cosford, they got a JU88, which has got um, ROM. Uh, 65 underneath and that was it did show up in the panel line so um, I want to get quite a strong panel lining on the go and then hit it with the oils to give streaking and, and effects like that I'm gonna do exhaust streaking um, engine streaking uh, even streaking from the gear down here Oh, lost the door keep losing that and and all sorts because again this is a, a well-worn bird this is um, right at the end of the war and obviously they stopped producing them in uh, I think 43 or 44 so it must have at least been nearly two years old um, if not older so that's what I'm going to do and um, we'll pick up next with a gloss coat over the floury wash so you should be able to see the panel lines and then we'll hit into the oils so I'm starting to apply the oil washes now and um, this one's just had a floury wash just over the panel lines and then rubbed off um, and then now it's I'm going to be trying to replicate quite a few dust effects now with various um, colours and also uh, just give it a filter and wear it in as well. So um, we've got this brown here which is very good and this is raw umber and that's a very good paint for um, doing what it is I want to do here now. Um, so I like to just put it on a, you can put it on a piece of cardboard or a piece of tissue or something like this. That just lets a few of the oils leach out so they dry a bit quicker. Um, and I just tend to leave that there for a little bit, spread it out. Then with a nice wide brush, just kind of getting a bit like that. I've got a pool of um, odorless thinners here. I'm just going to make up a thin wash. As you can see it's quite a dark brown colour. And the idea of this is just to run around um, the model, finding all of the recessed areas and the nooks and crannies and just kind of giving, um, breaking up the camouflage a little bit. So I do go on quite heavy here. Um, and that's quite a heavy pigmented wash there. So you can thin that down. You'll soon see when it goes on. Um, the idea behind this one is it's quite a late war aircraft, so it's been knocking around a long time because these were generally made in sort of 1942 and 43, and this is a 45 aircraft. So just trying to um, show that it's been around the block a little bit, really. So there you can see on the wing, um, it's just kind of finding its own way. I'm just seeing how that sort of starts to dry off 
good thing with oils is they're always workable so um, if we don't like how that starts to go we can always just go over with some more thinners and it'll um, start to wash it out a bit until we get to the effect that we want. Uh, they also dry a nice matte colour as well so that's quite good. Uh, this would be a little bit too strong for the blue on the underneath so um, I probably wouldn't use this kind of colour here you can see the blue if you actually go over it it's quite strong so you'd want to sort of um, anticipate that and come on with a, maybe a few lighter colours and um, we're getting to doing streaking and replicating where the engines um, had a bit of streaking and stuff later this is just a, an overall wash here at the minute now I do want to add a bit more thinners to the mix there it's all um, just by eye it's not fine art and here you can see it does look a bit sort of um, over the top the way it runs around but this is giving an overall panel line wash on top of the flory um, wash this on there and also it will start to just give dusty effects over the whole airframe not just the panel lines um, and once it's completely over the whole um, aircraft it will go to um, quite a long way to breaking up the colour and giving it a tone which is what we call a filter and that's what this is uh, you don't need to make sure it's perfectly over everything um, because it will all add to the sort of effect that we're looking for. Right, so. And brush strokes again shouldn't really matter because as this dries off it should just kind of go into an overall colour as opposed to um, actually being showing the brush strokes or anything and um, here on the wings I'm just going to give it a little bit of just take a bit off here with some tissue it has gone on a bit heavy and then now with a brush that's been a little bit uh, let a little bit of it run off so not so heavy just giving it a Just giving it a nice broad coat there. Now, again, you should be able to see at this point while it's wet if there's any dry areas, and that will mean it's um, not gone on. That just will show up areas where it hasn't had the wash. So, like there's a bit there on the side of the fuselage that I missed and it is starting to dry back now in places so we'll leave that to dry off a little bit see what we're left with work it um, a little bit more with some uh, thinners if we want um, to move stuff around a little bit and if it goes on a bit heavy in areas and then um, start with the next coat so now we've let that dry a little bit um, I'd just like to run over now with just some neat oils um, on a cotton bud and just try and run it out of any areas where it's a bit strong um, it's going to be hard to pick up on the camera here but it is starting to give the effect I'm looking for here but it is pulled up a little bit around um, some of these raised details which is a little bit more than what I'm after so I just um, wet the area like that and then there's a few blemishes there and there's one there and then going back with the brush just try and blend it in again just pull it out uh, now because of the amount that I've put on it has run around the under um, side as well but we'll leave that till the end here you can see so you've got these bits here but that'll all just lift you see you just blend it in you go over with thinners and there it is it's totally gone again so it's not a worry and it will it will never dry on well it won't for this process anyway I mean possibly if you left it a few <laughs> weeks or something it might dry on a bit harder but um, I've generally never found it ever a problem to to bite in 
There is one caveat to that, is um, you can buy water-based oil colours. Now they are completely different, and I think they're acrylic-based, and they do not come off, so um, I wouldn't use them at all. Uh, I think in a future video I'll go into using oils uh, more thoroughly, but basically the, the hard and fast rule for using oil paints for modelling is the best quality oil paint you can afford, that's the one to buy. This is the best you know, this is about £4 a pot, that's as far as I've gone, but there are some that go up to about £10, um, the artist's uh, range. Um, so the best ones you can get, the better. Um, you'll get much better results, the pigment will be finer and it will be make a better wash. Um, but do stay away from the water-based ones, because they don't seem to be anything like actual oil colours. They're not oil-based and it's the oil base which gives us the fluidity and keeps it moving as far as modelling is concerned, so just bear that in mind. Um, also, I've added on all of the small details now, but left the door off, so you've got to make sure that the door gets a bit, gets the same treatment as well, so it all blends in. And that's going to be posed open like this, but just something to bear in mind. Again, it's very easy to do all of this and then realise you've got a load of bits that have got to be stuck on and they all go on perfectly clean. Um, the only thing I do have to put on is radar at the front, which I'm happy for it to be clean because it's going to be so delicate I don't want to start um, messing about with that. So I think looking across there now that looks more or less what I was after. Again just keep an eye out for any of the unnatural pooling which is happening all around. And now we're just blending. I mean, here on the fuselage half, a fuselage side, it was um, showing to be uh, like I've gone in there with a brush like that. You can see brush strokes. So I've just gone over that, doing the same motion until it blends in, and now it's just disappeared. And it's just given a. It's again, it's the filter. We're looking through that brown colour at the camouflage colours underneath. So it gives them a different hue and a, and a different tone and it also uh, replicates dust as well which is what we're doing it for. Um, I've got some stuff underneath here which is going to fall off so let's just let that come off, that's one of the guided missiles. So again this is why I like using oils, there's plenty of, of weathering powders and techniques and all sorts. I mean, I know AK do a massive range and there's, there's a whole load of other ones, but I like oils simply due to the fact that they're just so workable and, you know, it's, 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 it can go anywhere. There's no um, restrictions on them because you can just make, they're so good for mixing, they are really nice, you're not restricted or anything, um, you just mash it all together, if it doesn't look right just add some more colours until it does look right, um, and it, again it's so cheap because you get so much and it goes so far that um, if it all goes wrong and you can't get to the colour, you can just start again. So. I do like that, I do find that quite a lot of the modelling products are a little bit overpriced for what they are. Um, there are the modelling oils, so I think it's um, Ab Tai Lung, do, um, there's a range of 501 oils which are mainly meant for armour, well they're aimed at armour, I mean you can use them for anything, they're oil paint. And that is a very high quality oil paint, but um, and it has very good colours because they're um, sort of matched to certainly German armour. Um, colours, but you don't have to use those, they are quite expensive. So, just a thought you know, you don't always have to go down the, the, the line of the modelling products because usually they are a little bit overpriced. So, but that's not knocking the quality, right? So, I think that's pretty good. It's kind of what I want. There's quite strong bits here where it's pulled up um, but I'm liking, I'm liking that and I'm going to leave that so now I'm going to go in with the next colour and I've got this dark sort of turquoise blue colour and I'm going to use this on the darker tone of the camouflage here 
just to try and um, give again a bit of tonal variation to break up that blocking colour. Now this is a cheaper oil, so it's not going to um, it's not going to break down as easy, but um, it still will. You've just got to you know it's not as good a quality paint. So there you can see it's not quite the colour we want. It's not quite. It's certainly not the same colour as the uh, camouflage there, but it's it's a it's a tone of it. I, I'm hard to. It's a, I find it hard to explain this. I know what I mean, but um, perhaps not coming across. What what this is going to do is going to break up the tonal colours um, across that camouflage because it's one. It's the same colour across the whole lot. If I now go over with this bluey colour it's going to break that up because it's not going to go over as consistently as the acrylic paint has that I've used. Um, hopefully that explains it a little bit but I'll be able to show. So I'm going to use a smaller brush here. I do have some specifically for oils but finding them is... There, there we go. Right. So this is one of the, um, just a paintbrush out of um, a Humbrol starter set which I find very useful. I'm just going to just put a few sort of I'm not trying to do a planal line wash or anything like that I'm just trying to add a bit of that colour on there in a broken form and then just pull it down and this is so subtle uh, you know you can barely see it what it will do is just give, across the whole aircraft, it will give a very subtle change. Um, so I'm going to carry on and do this now to the rest of these areas. So this is the ROM72 colour that we're um, doing this to, which is like a turquoisey blue colour. Um, I suppose a, it's not turquoise, is it? It's a, it's a kind of greeny blue very much a sea blue it's got um, well it's hard to explain but you can see it there so it's definitely got a blue in it it's it's blue and green are the strong tones to it so I'm hitting it with a blue here to try and accentuate those colours so I'll go on and um, add this to these areas and then we'll look back and see if we can um, hopefully we can see it's actually had an effect Okay, so I've just made this colour now to try and do the same process as we've done to the blue on the green. And um, I was looking through my paints and I thought, well, I don't really have a green that looks anything like it. And that was the only green I had. Now, this is um, what I mean about oils, because it's, you know, you wouldn't initially think that is you're going to be your green for that. And all I've done here is mixed a bit of the green with straight black and um, it's given us a very nice colour there. I've added a little bit more of that um, almost fluorescent coloured green and um, you might be able to see the two shades there, that's the darker one and this is this is what I'm kind of happy with now. So um, I'm going to use this just to uh, add a bit of tonal variation again to the uh, green which in this case is ROM73 Uh, keeping everything fluid again with the odorless thinners and um, hopefully that should work quite well again it's just a nice kind of tone of this it is a lot greener obviously but that's kind of what we want because we're only putting it, this is almost, if you think like um, how you do the dot filter, if you've seen that on Armour, where you put a whole load of small dots of a whole range of oil colours and then you blend them in with a wide brush, and it gives, um, gives the effect of just a nice natural coloured filter. It's kind of that, but it's um, we've already chosen the colour, so we're just not slapping it on, because otherwise it might change the colour too much, so that's something we want to avoid. We just want to keep control, and that's um, 
where these oils are very good for that. So just make sure your brush isn't too heavily laden with paint. And we need to be a bit thinner, I thought that, that's why I was trying to um, clear the brush. So if I put it in here, because I've used the brush to mix the oil paint, it's a bit heavy with the pigment, so just want to get some of that out. We want to kind of have the brush just mixing it in now and filling it even more. And don't worry about um, going over too much onto the other colour in the camouflage pattern because it all goes to help and it will be mixing with the um, brown colour as well a little bit and that, none of that's a problem it does move it all around if you want to keep your um, oil colours separate then the way to do that is give it a clear coat in between um, applications otherwise they will blend together is what they do it's what oil paints are um, extremely useful for Um, I didn't actually even seal the floury wash as well, so and I've uh, luckily I've found a few areas as I always do where it's pulled up and I um, didn't take it off correctly because I missed it, so I've been able to get that off as well. Now, again, you you can look at these things and think um, it's starting to go the wrong way a little bit, um, but uh, rest assured it's not a massive issue because you're dealing with oils it's very easy to bring everything right back to where you want to be see that's gone on a bit thick there but I'll come back in a minute when that's had a chance to dry off uh, and there's a lot less green on here and this is where we need to make sure we remember to do the door as well so I'll just give that an application starting to get messy now as well because it's uh, oils running around everywhere. Now because that's gone on a little bit heavy um, I'm just gonna pop around with the cotton bud try and stop it leaching into certain areas and just kind of wick some of it off around where it's pooling on the on the wing there. Some of it's run around the bottom, so let's just clear that. Hopefully you can see here just how um, easy oils are. I mean, um, I was surprised when I started using them. I was always a bit worried that um, there was a right and wrong, but basically you just kind of do as much as you want and then um, start taking it off. And I didn't really expect it to be as easily workable as it is. Um, until you put a fixing coat over the top of whatever that would be, whether it be like a clear coat um, or a matte coat to finish it off or, or anything, unless you put something on to seal it, it will forever be workable, obviously in a short time period. Like I said, I wouldn't leave it weeks. Um, but you could leave it days, you know, you could leave it overnight not really worry about getting back to it for 24 hours and it'd still be movable. Uh, the Flory wash is like that as well. That's why I like using those these products because um, as with life, you know, you can put something down and all of a sudden you've got to go and do something. And um, if you use something that eats in, like enamel washes and stuff, that and when it dries it goes on hard, then you can be in a bit of a bit of a pickle. So that doesn't work for me. Um, the products are fine but they just are used a little bit differently. Right so I'm going to leave that now to dry for a few hours and then I'm going to come back and see what that looks like. I'm thinking the green and the blue is going to be a little bit heavy so then I'll go over with a thinned um, wide brush or even a softer brush if I've got one here and um, just kind of take out some of the um, strokes or the, the heavy marking where the brush has gone on. And then, I think we'll probably just go in for dust effects after that. 
Um, I do need to touch in these exhausts here, so I'll do that and then do some staining running back like this. Then I think we'd be somewhere near there, just waiting then for um, uh, any dust effects. Then we'd just be waiting for any dust effects, so um, we'll check back in. And so we'll check back in with that and see what's. Um, and have a look at the next stage. Just getting to the finishing touches now with the uh, condor here and um, I've decided to uh, skip past a couple of um, steps. So what's actually, this has taken an awful long time uh, to get to this stage so I would have liked to have got this one finished. It's uh, <laughs> been going on for a little while um, and the, what's been holding it back is uh, the antennas at the front. So I've got one of the antennas here and um, I have attempted, I'll see if, let's get this zoomed in I have attempted to um, make the antennas out of wire and um, because they're a little bit thick as far as the kit part's concerned now that did work and it, it has gone okay but um, it's they're a little bit fragile and i know i'm just going to knock them off straight away so i think i'm for, for the sake of ease and to get this project finished i'm going to leave these off now i this there is obviously the kit parts um if you want to uh use them straight out of the box now obviously you can use the kit part straight out of the box, they're a little bit thick but you know they'd be perfectly fine if you're not too worried. Um, but you could also try making it up like this. And I just cut some um, bits of wire and stuck them on like that and then they go around the antenna like that. Uh, but unfortunately as you can see these were all glued together and I've already broken them off. Um, and you've got to make 12 all together so it's a little bit of a tall order so um, I'm going to leave these off the kit and we'll just make up a story that they remove the antennas for whatever reason it being um, the end of the war May 1945 so anything is possible so um, that addresses that part as far as the antennas are concerned and then with the actual kit, I've, actually, I've let the um, previous oil washes that you saw uh, dry off for about a week now. So I'm just going to touch in um, with painting the exhausts here. Um, just paint those in with uh, a dark aluminium colour. Um, then I'm going to mat the whole thing down and then use some pigments to give some dust and some streaking. And also put in some um, exhaust staining here as well and that should then complete the build. I've taken all the masking off, I was going to do that on camera but it, it proved to be quite difficult and I'd already knocked off uh, quite a lot of the parts uh, in moving the aircraft around so I've taken all the masking off and I think it's pretty good. Um, I'm reasonably happy with it, certainly on the uh, gondola underneath if I just show you that, that's come out pretty well so I'm quite happy with that all the way around. Um, and that's using the Montex mass set as uh, was discussed in the uh, beginning of the video um, and overall it's pretty good there's a couple bits uh, along the side here of the side windows where um, there's a bit of dust got in there uh, but you know got to live with that I'm not worried too much um, and I think uh, now I've matted it down as well with some of the MRP super clear um, we'll just go try and go in on the cockpit. Hopefully you can see there it's uh, it's quite shiny you know it's a good good bit of the, the clear parts are very good in this kit. Um, I have added I have added um, a few extra bits so we've got the barrel there which I've mentioned before um, also in putting some of the smaller parts on the um, pito tube here I replaced with Albion alloys uh, tubing and that is um, 0.5 with 0.3 internal and then 0.3 with 0.1 internal to uh, give it a bit of a different size at the front. Um, you'll be able to see that in the pictures uh, that are about to follow. Um, as I mentioned earlier there's no antenna on this one um, 
my mistake not drilling the holes and noticing it at the beginning and it being a little bit um, delicate and difficult to make I decided to leave that off so uh, that's no problem um, I'm quite happy with the gun turret there uh, that's that's masked up and um, come off quite well so I think that's that's uh, that's I'm reasonably pleased with that um, the next stage is just to add a bit of exhaust streaking um, and I'm gonna do that out of here and just pull some of that back just with a few pigments I won't show that because I've shown that in other videos so if you want to see that there's plenty of videos on YouTube as well as uh, through mine that show how to um, add some of the pigments and just going back through the um, paintwork here hopefully you can see it's quite a nice finish um, I used MRP Super Clear uh, Matte Varnish. Just trying to find that. Uh, so I used this one to pat it down just lightly, trying to keep a little bit of the sheen that was showing through. Um, and yeah, no, no, uh, no problem as usual with that. And I think you can see certainly the toned down um, uh, camouflage paint and um, the way it's worked with the oil paints I think that was a useful thing to do it's it's blended the colors in and given them a bit of tonal variation um, there has been a lot of time in between some of these parts and I have noticed the decals have um, got a little bit of silvering certainly on the kit decals the swastikas on the tail from tech mod they've gone down as usual uh, absolutely no problem they sunk right in um, the crosses on the wings are fine it's just some of the big lettering out here on the side of the fuselage but you know again I can live with that um, pose the door open so when we get into the pictures again you'll be able to see uh, quite a lot of the interior there if you look for it it's a bit hard to show it on camera but when you see it in person it does show up quite well um, and then looking at the underside I think that's come come out quite nicely some of the subtle weathering Again, as usual, shows up a bit better in person, but um, it's just subtlety. It's just building up those layers of paint um, and um, weathering with the oils and stuff. Uh, it's still a long way from what I'd like to be. Um, this has been a bit of a learner. I've done a few since starting this one, which I would say have, have employed a few techniques that I would have liked to have known about when doing this one. But uh, overall, it's quite an impressive model, I think, and um, I'm pleased with it and uh, it certainly captures the shape of the condor especially when you see it from the sort of angle here looking back at it so um, I'm really pleased with it. The gangly undercarriage has proved no amount of problems <laughs> it's snapped I don't know how many times and I've had to re-glue it because um, it is a bit of a strange way of how it goes how it's actually designed with it pointing forward like that um, so you, you're always going to get problems I keep laying it down a bit too hard and then it uh, it sort of springs back, uh, but yeah. So um, that's enough waffling, I think. So I'm going to add a few pigments, a few final touches, and then get some uh, final reveal pictures. Hopefully, you've enjoyed all of the parts, and um, I apologise it's taken a bit long to get this one finished, but it's over the line now. So hopefully, you enjoy that, and um, look forward to the next one. <laughs>